Well, it's that time of year again. So in this video, we're actually switching gears and jumping back onto the Mark VI briefly because it's my least favorite time of the year again, the dreaded MOT. I'm not sure how I manage it, but all the cars I seem to have always end up having their MOT around the winter time. Yes, I've got a little bit lucky today because we've actually got some decent weather, so I'm gonna crack on and get the ST ready for its MOT. For those of you waiting for a Mark VII update, then I'm actually making some really good progress with that. I've got the engine back in, pretty much all the plumbing's done and all the electrics are plugged back in. I'm just waiting for a few things. I've ordered all the fluids I need for the car, so engine oil, gearbox oil, coolant, and none of it's arrived. We're having Royal Mail strikes at the moment in the UK and just nothing's arriving on time. I've been waiting like over a week and a half for the stuff that I've ordered past the delivery date. So that's why that's taken a little bit longer, but it gives me opportunity to jump back into the Mark VI and then I can do all the prep that I need to do. So that's got its MOT. But if I get the Mark VII on the road any time in the next couple of weeks or even months, that's also going to have its MOT smack bang in the middle of winter time. So <laughs> that's just how it goes, I guess. But nevertheless, we've got good weather today. So let's go and see what we need to do to get the Mark VI through its MOT. Now last year my ST actually failed its MOT. We had a split drive shaft boot, we had a side light out, and also the horn didn't work. All pretty easy things to fix, but it was quite stressful. I was tearing around on a Sunday afternoon trying to find a complete drive shaft because I tried to fix the one I had and replace the boot and the drive shaft itself just fell apart. So I spent like a whole weekend in the pouring rain. Luckily I managed to get a little bit of cover, but it was freezing cold, just trying to fit, well find and then fit a new drive shaft. But I got the ST through its MOT, fixing the things that it actually failed on, but nevertheless, there were still a few advisories to sort out, some of which I've done, but there's one in particular that I've been putting off this whole time, and now I finally need to get on and do it. So one of the advisories that I got last year was relating to one of the lower ball joints on the front suspension. But those of you that have been watching for a while know that I polybushed all the front control arms on this car and also replaced the ball joints while I was at it, so that is all sorted. Another advisory I had was that I've got a leak from somewhere underneath, be one of those stupid sliding joints on the exhaust, so that's blowing slightly. But I've actually got some big updates coming for the exhaust, hopefully in the new year, so I'm not too worried about that one because it will probably just come up as an advisory again and then I can sort that when we do some big things with the exhaust. Another thing I did was I fitted brand new rear calipers on both sides. Now these aren't actually Fiesta calipers, these were listed for a Focus Mark 1 I, I think which are pretty much the same caliper but I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, but there's a little bracket that holds the handbrake cable and it's not quite the same on the Focus as it is on the Fiesta so the handbrake cable doesn't seat in the bracket properly but again it just comes up as an advisory because the handbrake functions fine. And then that just leaves us with one more advisory from the last MOT that I need to take a look at and see if it's actually as bad as they say it is. And that is the rear brake lines. Now I've got braided brake hoses front and rear on this, but the bit that's come up on the MOT isn't about the flexible part of the brake lines. It's the hard pipes and specifically the ones that run from the front to the rear. And I think it said on the MOT that it's the section near the fuel tank and they're either corroded or it's a bit of a gray area, this one. I'm noticing it's coming up quite a lot. The last four or five years, whenever I've had an MOT, there's always something related to the brake hard lines. From what I was told, if the brake lines are, like say, dirty or covered in grease or oil or anything like that, then the MOT test is not allowed to wipe them to check if the metal underneath is corroded. So you can get an advisory if they can't see that the metal's in good condition. But if it's in bad condition underneath all that grease, they're not allowed to actually check it so they can't fail it it's a really weird one i mean if anyone is an mot tester and can let me know in the comments if that's correct but that's kind of what i was told anyway by by one mot tester so i'm not sure on the exact technicalities of it but on my mot last year the advisory was that the brake lines were either corroded or covered in grease or other material so I need to dive in there and find out whether they actually do need replacing whether they just need cleaning so they can be inspected properly and not be a problem for the MOT or an advisory or whatever. So if they are corroded, we're actually going to replace them and fit new brake lines. But if not, we'll clean them up and then just make sure that they're ready for the MOT testers to check them when this car eventually goes in. So let's get the car up in the air and then we can check the condition of the brake lines, specifically at the rear.
Okay, so on first inspection, it didn't actually look too bad, but I've actually gone ahead and cleaned up some of those bits where, you know, there's a little bit of dirt on the lines, but where they didn't actually look all that bad. And it is pretty bad. I definitely need to replace a significant portion of the brake lines at the rear of this car. Luckily, there are a couple of unions near the fuel tank and everything sort of from those unions forward seems to be okay. But everything back from that, it looks like that's gonna have to be replaced. Luckily, the unions themselves look okay. So I'm hoping I can just make some little connectors to go on there and then just make a new bit of brake pipe from those. So we haven't really got to cut any of the steel lines and reflare any of the lines that are already on there and make new connections. I'm hoping I can use the unions that are already on there. So I'm gonna to have to try and work on getting those like rear parts of the brake lines that go from those unions backwards to the flexi lines. I need to get those bits off and then hopefully I can get them off all in one piece and I can actually retain the shape of them and then match that one and make up the new pipes. I'm removing the original hard line from the flexi line and to be fair it didn't really give me too much grief. Granted the fitting on the hard line didn't actually rotate but luckily because I installed new braided lines for the flexis a little while ago the fitting on that side rotated fine I was able to undo this no problem. I used these little plugs that I made from some spare brake line fittings just to try and stop as much fluid leaking out of the lines as possible and also to try and stop too much air leaking back into the system. I will still bleed them later, but I just thought this would go some way to helping me with the amount of mess I'd have to clean up, the amount of fluid I'd lose, and also, like I said, how much air would get back into the lines. Next, I'm releasing all the clips that hold the brake lines to the underside of the car so that I can pull it down and have access to the union at the back, which hides up by the fuel tank. The union itself looked a little bit worse for wear on the driver's side, so I wasn't taking any chances with this one. I went with a wire brush, some penetrating fluid, and also a little prayer. And I don't know which one of them did it, but I actually managed to get it off without too much hassle and then I fitted another one of my little plugs. With that union disconnected I could remove the rear section of the brake line from the car and when I removed it I noticed something. Okay so that's the rear section of the driver's side brake line removed from the car and it's a damn good job I'm replacing this because just pulling it out one of those clips you'll probably have seen from where it was leaking it's literally just ripped the line open so I'm hoping I mean that should have definitely come up on an MOT and failed an MOT because I mean brake fluid's under a lot of pressure so that was a disaster waiting to happen. Nevertheless, let's get this brake line replaced. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use and how I'm gonna make up the new lines. Now for a lot of vehicles, it's actually quite uncommon to be able to buy pre-made steel brake lines like the originals that have come off your car. What's a lot more common is to make up your own brake lines using, this is a copper nickel brake pipe. So it, people sometimes just call it copper lines, but copper by itself isn't suitable for brakes. It's a lot softer. This is like, like I said, a copper nickel alloy. So it's a little bit more sturdy than copper, but it still allows you to bend it a lot easier than you would be able to with a steel line. So this is what we're gonna use. This is the proper stuff that you're meant to use for making brake pipes and I have used it before. You can get kits with this sort of stuff in and it comes with all the other bits you need, but this is just kind of stuff I've collected over the years. And then I've got a brake pipe flaring tool, which is perfect for use of this pipe. I'm not sure whether this one can flare steel lines, some of them can, some of them can't. I would need to check, but that doesn't matter in this case because I'm reusing the original fittings on the rest of the line that's still on the car running from the front to the back. So I don't need to remake a fitting for that because that little nut that you saw where I put uh, one of my homemade uh, little plugs in, that threaded in fine, so I'm not worried about that. And that was actually rotating on the original line fine, so that should be great to reuse. So I don't need to use that. So that's the brake pipe flaring tool. I've also got a couple of fittings here. We've got some male and female fittings. I'm only really gonna need males for this. And that's just a little union if I needed to, but I don't need that. That's a brake pipe straightener. You just feed this through here and it gets it nice and straight. And then a little deburring tool, which for me is actually just like a little handheld countersink, but it'll work just the same. And then a little brake pipe cutting tool or just pipe cutter, little one. You need this because you can't just like snip this with a pair of pliers or anything because you'll crush the end of it and then it will be no use. You need it to remain perfectly round and then you just deburr the ends of it with this little guy. So that's all the stuff that we're going to use. So the first thing I need to do is try and recreate the shape of our original brake line with this copper pipe. If I call it copper, I'm not gonna say copper nickel or any of those other names. I'm gonna say copper lines, but like I said earlier, it's not straight copper, just in case anyone gets on my back about that. Oh no, you can't use just copper for the brake line. Yeah, I know, it's not copper, it's copper nickel or whatever it is they make it out of, but I'm gonna say copper for ease of making this video. So let's get a new copper line 
made up to match the original steel line. So I'm using the straightening tool to straighten out my little coil of new pipe and then bending it to match the original line that I removed from the car. I'm leaving both ends a little bit longer than they need to be just so I've got a little bit of excess to play with once I've got it in position and then I can cut it to length. The beauty of the flaring tool that I'm using is that you can actually flare the lines when they're on the car. So I went ahead and installed the new brake lines that I've made up into all the clips but I'll show you the flaring process on a spare little piece of pipe that I've cut off. The first thing I'm doing is deburring the ends because the little pipe cutter does crush the copper in slightly and narrows the opening so you just want to deburr that with a little deburring tool or in my case a handheld countersink bit. Now it's important to make sure you know what type of flare you need to match up with what's already on your vehicle and also with the fittings that you're using to make up your new brake pipe. For this pipe I'm going to be using a DIN or ISO flare. Now as well as different types of flares there's also different diameters of brake line but the most common is 4.75 millimeters or 3 16ths of an inch if you're working in Imperial. But no matter which units you're using one thing everyone needs to do is make sure your fitting is on your pipe before you do the flare. For the DIN flare that I'm going to be making here, the one end of the punch is just a flat stop to set the length of the pipe inside the tool. With that set, I'm tightening down the two 10mm retaining nuts to clamp the pipe in place so that it doesn't move inside the tool when I wind in the punch. Next, I'm removing the end stop and flipping that fitting over to give me the punch to make the DIN flare. Some types of flare require more than one punch, but for this one, it's just this one end. There's a special punch grease which is applied to the end, and then it's just a simple job of winding the punch all the way in until it bottoms out on the body of the tool. And that's the flare done, so I can remove the punch, undo the two retaining nuts, and then we have a nice new DIN flare. So there we go, flaring brake lines really isn't that difficult. I definitely say the hardest part is knowing what type of flare you need and making sure you've got the correct tools to get the correct flare for the components that are already on your car. This isn't a how-to, and I'm by no means telling you that this is how you flare brake lines and you shouldn't be using this for like a tutorial on how to do it. If you're new to this and you've not done it before, I highly recommend you either get it done professionally or at least get someone who knows what they're doing to help you out. I'm confident that I know what I'm doing with this because I've done it plenty of times in the past. I've had people who know what they're doing work through it with me and I work with qualified mechanics. So I'm happy in my own work here, but like I say, don't take this as a dead set tutorial. I just wanted to show you through my process of doing it. So for now, it's time to crack on and actually flare the lines that are on the car, making sure that I put the fittings on before I do the flares. Right, okay, there we go. That's the new brake line, at least on the driver's side, installed. I've gone ahead and just done all underneath off camera because it started to get dark and I just wanted to crack on and get at least this one finished today. But it's all rooted under there and back in its clips and the union at that end, it's all done up. So this side at least is done, but like I said, unfortunately it has gone dark. So I'm gonna have to carry on and do the other side tomorrow when I've got a bit more light. But the annoying thing is I've got to go out tonight and I need the car. So I'm going to have to get someone to come and help me bleed the brakes. My dad's going to come up in a few minutes. Hopefully I'll do it right this time. I don't know if you guys remember the last time my dad tried to help me bleed brakes, but I've got no brakes at all. What were you doing? I thought it was an automatic. <laughs> he was pressing the clutch. Yeah, it didn't go to plan. So he's going to pop up. We're going to bleed this side and hopefully that will be enough for today. And then crack on and do the other side tomorrow. But it's meant to rain tomorrow, so that could scupper that for me. But nevertheless, I'm really happy with how this side's gone. And then tomorrow, there's no point me taking you through all of it like in real time again. So we'll probably just time lapse me doing the other side. If I even show you at all, because I'm doing it in the pouring rain, then that's probably not going to happen. So this might be nearly the end of the video. It might not be. We'll see. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Okay, we're back. And obviously... It did rain, so I brought the ST down to mum and dad's garage, wheeled the Mark 7 outside, covered the engine bay with a tarp because bonnet and that's all still off. But anyway, this isn't about the Mark 7, so ST's back in the air, and I'm going to crack on and make the new brake line for the passenger side.
One of the fittings on the passenger side pipe is actually the opposite type of fitting, so I needed my other flaring tool. It's pretty much the same process apart from there's two different punch ends that you wind into the tool to make this double SAE flare. There we go, that's the new brake lines fitted and everything's been bled. I've tightened everything up, I've checked the leaks and everything is good there. The car's back on the ground, wheels are on, all torque spec and all that good stuff. So the car hopefully now is ready for its MOT. I just did the rest of it off camera because once again, it's gotten dark, but there isn't really much else to show you. So making new brake lines, hard lines, really isn't that difficult. Like I said earlier in the video though, if you're not confident or you've not done it before, get someone who knows what they're doing just to help you out. Like, like I said, this isn't a, a how-to by any means because brakes are a safety thing and you know i'm not a qualified mechanic but i'm confident with the job i've done with this and i'm really happy with the results so fingers crossed i passed my mot but anyway that's going to do it for this video as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time